what's going on guys this is matt and today we're brewing a blonde ale if you like grain of glass videos like this make sure to like the video and subscribe to my youtube channel i also want to thank my channel members so thanks so much for becoming a member anyway guys we got the strike water heating up right now so we're going to go ahead and jump into beer smith 3 first and then we're going to go right into the brew deck Now to jump into Beersmith 3 for the Blonde Ale, we are planning a 4.2 gallon batch. I've never brewed a Blonde Ale before, so I went on YouTube and I actually got a lot of inspiration from David Heath's Blonde Ale video. Uh, so my hopping schedule and hop choices are going to be very similar to his recommendation for his Blonde Ale. The idea for this recipe, on paper, it kind of looks like a pale ale with wheat malt. For the malt bill, we have 6% being caramel malt, 12% being wheat malt, and 81% being two row. For the hop schedule, it's kind of all over the place using uh, pretty much three hops, Citra, Chinook, and Amarillo. We are also planning a 30 minute boil instead of an hour boil just to simplify the brew day. Um, so for the 30 minute edition, we're doing uh, 0.15 ounces of Chinook. For the 15 minute edition, we're using 0.25 ounces of Citra and 0.3 ounces of Amarillo. And then for the five minute edition, we're using 0.15 ounces of Citra and 0.2 ounces of Amarillo. We're also planning a dry hop as well. So we're gonna use 0.5 ounces of Amarillo, 0.6 ounces of Citra and 0.85 ounces of Chinook. Those measurements kind of seem random for the dry hopping and that's just because I wanted to use the rest of the hops that I had when I bought the packs. For the yeast we're using Kviking from Imperial Yeast which is a quike strain. I pick Kviking because it will help produce some fruity notes and in the BJCP style guide it says a fruity notes is optional for this style. Also the dry hopping will also help contribute those notes as well. For the starter information the Kviking has 200 billion cells and we only need 145 billion cells so there's really no need for a starter. For the water chemistry it's going to be a little bit higher on the sulfates to chloride about 3 to 1. Next we're going to go ahead and jump into the brute. We first double crushed our grains to a fine crush. We had to adjust our water chemistry so we added 1.9 grams of calcium chloride, 1.3 grams of epsom salt, 1.5 grams of chalk, 0.5 grams of canning salt, and 5.5 grams of gypsum. Once we hit our strike temp, we doughed in. Our pH reading measured out to around 5.6, so we added some lactic acid to adjust. After a 60 minute mash and a 10 minute mash out, we raise the grain basket and start heating up the wort. We sparge with one gallon of distilled water. Our pre-boil gravity measured out to around 1043. We plan for a 30 minute boil and we add 0.15 ounces of Chinook. With 15 minutes left, we add 0.25 ounces of Citra, 0.3 ounces of Amarillo, Irish Moss, and Yeast Nutrient. With five minutes left, we add 0.15 ounces of Citra and 0.2 ounces of Amarillo. We also start running boiling wort through the pumps, line, and chiller to sanitize the equipment. Once the boil was over, we started running cold water to the plate chiller to cool down to 90 degrees. After the wort is cooled down, we splash the wort into the fermenter. To aerate, we used a stir stick drill attachment. Lastly, we added our Kviking from Imperial Yeast. The OG measured out to around 1046. After a few days in the fermenter, we moved the beer over to a purged keg. The final gravity measured out to around 1010, so the ABV measured to 4.7%. Okay, so we are at the end of the video where I can talk about the brew day and then also talk about tasting notes, appearance, aroma, mouthfeel, and flavor. Uh, this is the blonde ale that's finished up. I've actually uh, pretty much emptied this whole keg, so I'm a little late with making this video, but that's okay. We still got it out, which is good. 
Uh, so just a few things I want to talk about the beer. Um, I wanted to make a light beer just because lately I've just been really into light beers more than I ever have been. I don't know if it's just the hot weather in Michigan or if I'm just kind of sick of these super hoppy or super dark or super complex beers. I just like something really light and refreshing. So I've been just pumping these out like crazy and I've really been enjoying them. So I don't really plan on stopping anytime soon either. I use Quike with this beer as well. Uh, Quake honestly pretty much ruined me. Uh, honestly, I, I don't really remember the last time I haven't used Kvike now. I think I pumped this one out in about two to three days of fermentation and then it hit the keg. Uh, so that's been really great. Uh, but I do have a non Quake beer coming out for my next grain of glass video. Uh, so you can look forward to a more typical uh, grain of glass video for that coming soon. When building this recipe, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I didn't really know where to go with it since I didn't haven't really built a blonde ale recipe. But what I found online is it's pretty much a pale ale recipe without a lot of bitterness and with wheat malt. So that's pretty much how I built the recipe in Beersmith 3. I did overshoot my gravity since I'm still trying to get used to sparging. I sparge now with just one gallon of uh, room temperature distilled water um, and I get around 70 to 75% efficiency. So I'm still trying to tune Beersmith 3 uh, so I don't overshoot or undershoot my gravity. So I did have to add some distilled water, water to this, I believe in the fermenter. Uh, to lower the original gravity, but that's okay because we got more beer out of it, so I'm not complaining. So lastly, we can go to appearance, aroma, mouthfeel, and flavor. The first thing we can talk about is appearance. Uh, I did use gelatin for this, and I have been using gelatin lately in a lot of my beers, mainly because it's uh, the season in Michigan where there's a lot of competition, so I'm gonna be submitting this. So I just wanna do everything I can to squeeze out as many points as I can. So. I did use cold side findings for this and it cleared up really, really nicely. Uh, my last video, I used gelatin and it was very cloudy. I find that I just have to wait longer uh, for them to really clear up for the gelatin to do what it needs to do. Um, usually it's about a week after I pitch my gelatin and it really clears up. Um, so this really did the trick. It is super, super clear. So that's really fun to see that I have clear beers now. Um, as far as appearance goes, um, it's about a yellow to gold color. And it has a fairly long lasting, a white color head as well. So next we can go into aroma. So for aroma, honestly, if someone gave this to me and told me to smell it and tell me what style it is, I would probably say it's a pale ale because that's pretty much what it smells like. Uh, I did uh, late additions in the boil kettle and I also uh, dry hop this with a decent amount of hops. Um, so it's it's pretty much smells like a pale ale which you know may or may not be the style on the BJCP. It says you can have fruity flavors and hop notes can be present. It is kind of lacking uh, some malt aroma, some bready and caramel aromas. It's pretty much just hop aroma. Next we can go into mouthfeel. So for mouthfeel, honestly, this is my favorite part about the blonde ale. And that's really when you add wheat to anything, I, in my opinion, it just makes everything taste so much more refreshing. Um, this is a very, very refreshing beer, and the wheat gives it this really soft mouthfeel. And it's really the first thing I notice when I'm drinking this beer is how soft the mouthfeel is. So lastly, we can go into flavor. So for flavor, it's, it's really deceptive because again, if you smell it, you kind of prepare yourself because you think it's gonna be like a hot bomb and it's gonna be very bitter, but it's actually not bitter at all. Um, I think the target was around 25 IBUs, but honestly, it even tastes less than that. Um, so you, you really have this hop forward aroma, but the bitterness isn't really coming through at all. It does have a slight malty sweetness and the caramel notes that I added isn't really coming through though. Now, even though it's lacking in bitterness, it does have a healthy amount of hop flavor, um, like citrus notes, but it's not assertive at all. I would say on the finish, it's supposed to finish kind of dry. And when designing the water chemistry, that's kind of what the intention was since it's three to one sulfates to chloride. But because of the wheat malt, honestly, I'm not really getting a dry finish on this. The wheat malt really makes it soft on the palate um, and I'm getting more of a softer mouthfeel. Anyway, guys, that really concludes the Blonde Ale Grain of Glass video. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I also have some t-shirts and merchandise, so make sure to check the description down below for a link for that. 
Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.